Greetings, greetings, greetings. So hopefully my sound is okay. I am kicked back as I do this video on Wednesday evening, Wednesday night. And um, I listened, I actually, over the last couple of days, I actually listened to, listened to two uh, videos. So I'm going to recap really the just Sunday Night Live because uh, the one he did Tuesday night, I think it was. He really didn't say a whole lot. But so the video on Sunday night was two hours, five minutes. And I didn't get it, give it a title. Um, he started about nine minutes in. If y'all will excuse me a moment. Okay. So he started about nine minutes in um, into the video. Uh, you know, he plays his music and then um, he tr he talks about his merch and, and, and y'all giving a donation. Um, and he talked about his clothes. You know, he got to tell us what he got on and, and tell us, you know, how great he looks, how great he look. And, you know, he got to say, I'm trying to look pretty for you. You know, for those of you who see his uh, videos, you know, that's been his thing lately. I want to look pretty for you. He likes to say that. So uh, he had on black and he said that Kojic, the Kojic wear black on first Sunday. Now that threw me off because I went, I attended, I was a member of the Kojic church very briefly, just while we were stationed in uh, Fort, um, uh, uh, Fort Houston in Virginia. So I very briefly went to the Kojic church about two years at, I think at the most. And I don't remember, that was back in the 90s. I don't remember whether we wore black on first Sunday or not. But I'm really uh, apostolic, and apostolics wear white on first Sunday for, for communion. Now, the cool JC church, y'all, they give real wine for for communion. Um, and, and I currently attend a Methodist, I'm a member of a Methodist church, and we wear white at the Methodist church for communion. I ain't never known of, even when I went to this Pentecostal church that really, really was like a, um, Pentecostal holiness. It wasn't Kojic or Methodist or Baptist or it was just Pentecostal holiness. And I don't know. I don't know what denomination. I, I mean, I don't know what organization it was under, but we were white um, there too. But anyway, so that just kind of threw me off. What do y'all wear for communion? On for do y'all do communion on first Sunday? Because I know some churches do it like uh, they don't do it every single first Sunday. Um, uh, my friend in, in Hartford, they church don't do it every single first Sunday. But anyway. I'm taking too much time with that. So anyway, after he talked about his clothes and why he was wearing black, um, he said that he need donations so that he can attend a funeral in Detroit this weekend. So he wants y'all to pay for his trip to Detroit this weekend. He said buy his t-shirts, send cash apps so he can get to Detroit. Uh, William says that he's in the business of minding other folk business. See, he come up with some catchy slogans or either he take them from somebody else. But however he gets them, he say some pretty catchy stuff. And uh, I like that because or he could really put this kind of stuff on his T-shirts, really. Don't put your face on the T-shirt, will you? Just put the catchy slogans on the T-shirt. Because that, that one's, you know, that one's, you're in the business of minding other people's business. It was a YouTuber in the what we call the beef sector. Um, she used to say, um, y'all, I've been minding my own business and y'all's too. I used to always think you should put that on some merchandise, put that on a, um, on a shirt. But anyway, um, he spent time trying to see who the trolls were. So lately, uh, people have come in the chat and they've been hitting that, that mad button. You know, he gets mad. Why y'all hitting the mad button? Why y'all, why y'all angry? You know, and then he'll try to click on their little a page or channel to see if he can see their profiles because he wants to see what they look like so he can so he can uh, uh um you know drag them a little bit but usually it's like a troll page or whatever so uh he was he looked a little annoyed at that but i was i was kind of tickled uh his first topic was wendy williams um as most most of you already know, probably know uh we, wendy williams had the rona and um during that time she um was uh admitted into uh admitted for some mental health um treatment and so he was talking about that he was discussing all the rumors reasonings including um she may be drinking again i was like wow why you gotta say that but she was supposed to come back uh start back airing live i guess 
on October 4th. But as you can see here, it says Wendy will not be returning um, with new shows on October 4th. She has been and continues to be under the doctor's care and still not ready to return to work. We plan to return with uh, new shows on October 18th. Uh, her breakthrough um, and with YouTube and all their rules. Sometimes I don't like to say that word, but y'all can see the word there. Case is no longer an issue and she is she has tested negative. I'm thankful for that. That's that's good news. But she is still dealing with some ongoing medical issues. And so that was a statement from the Wendy show. But um, so William, you know, he was talking about this, what it could be. He suggested that she could be drinking again. Now, I will tell you from personal experience. The Rona not only messes with your physical health, it messes with your mind. It messes with your mental health. So it did not surprise me that she, with all the other stuff that she had already been going through uh, with some health issues, it did not surprise me that, you know, she uh, went to get uh, some mental health treatment. There's no shame in that, y'all. Don't nobody, don't never let nobody convince you that um, taking care of your mental health is any less important than taking care of your physical health. It's just as important. And don't let nobody shame you uh, because you're wise enough to make sure that you're taking care of your mental health. But William feels that mental health issues shows weakness. He started doing this commentary about how weak it is and that it's an excuse. Um, he even used um, Simone Bowles. Am I pronouncing that right? B-I-L-E-S. Um, the gymnast lady. Yeah, I can tell I don't know much about gymnastics. But um, he was talking about that and how people use it as an excuse. And, and almost said, you know, he was almost saying you need to suffer uh, in silence and private. And then come out and present to the world, I guess, something else. But the people that he was referring to that he was trying to suggest that they was weak for seeking mental health are successful people. Wendy Williams and Simone Biles may have been may they, they may have admitted to uh you know to having some some mental issues or needing some mental treatment and, and you know not anything major. We all go through uh times when we're down or times when we're sad or periods of depression not in depression or not clinically depressed but we all go through y'all know what i mean but they admitted it on social media they admitted it to the public and he think of them as weak but yet i ain't never seen wendy williams or uh, simone i hope i'm pronouncing her right name right i never seen neither one of them um begging for cash apps they're not homeless um, they don't need to ask anybody to buy merchandise or send cash outs for them to get to Detroit or anywhere else they want to fly to around the world. So who's weak? Who appear weak? You know, William do all of this tough, tough, tough. Okay, I'm on a tangent now. All this tough talking. Um, you know, like he got it all together. And talk all this trash about other people. And it's like, sir. <laughs> sir. Anyway, anyway. Let me get off that. Let me get off that. Let me get off that. He said, he quoted, um, preparation meeting opportunity. Um, he said, success is when preparation meets opportunity. When he was talking about, you know, these people using excuse, mental health as an excuse and, and all of that. And then he, you know, he's talking about, uh, preparation meeting opportunity oh god and i was just y'all know i was annoyed listening to him say all this stuff and then he says um he said when opposition he said opposition fuels his ego and fuels his drive he said you know in other words he doesn't get sad or he doesn't have mental any type of mental breakdowns or issues that instead Opposition fuels his ego and fuels his drive. Drive. And I'm thinking, hmm, is it working for you? Is it working for you? Because I'm looking at you and I'm looking at William, Wendy Williams and I'm looking at you. Maybe, 
maybe it ain't working for you. Maybe you, maybe you need to, well, anyway, listen, if Wendy ends her show today, cause he, he was talking about her, the possibility of her not doing the show anymore, you know, um, and trying to act like she wasn't successful or she wasn't prepared because she was considering ending her show because of, you know, life issues. But if Wendy ends her show today, financially, she would be fine. She won't have any need to ask for any donations, cash apps or anything. Wendy will be fine. Anyway, anyway, <sighs> anyway, moving on, <laughs> moving right along. After that, he got on um, gay ministers at a script club, you know, and I kind of just like my uh, tablet just phased out. That's that's how I started phasing out on the video. I said, OK, here we go. Then out of the blue, y'all, out of the blue from nowhere, William went on this tangent. It, it just it just after all of this talk about, you know, being weak, if you know you. When you, when you, you know, seek therapy and you start talking about mental health, that's weakness and that's excuses. Then all of a sudden he went on this tangent about being crucified and not acknowledged. Um, and he ain't taking it no more. <laughs> I mean, he just, he just got all, all off topic, um, was nowhere near. Cause you know, he writes out this agenda and you know, he's talking about, he needs to stay with his agenda, stay with his topic. Mm-mm. He went on this tangent about not being acknowledged and how people crucify him. And he starts saying, I ain't taking it no more. I ain't taking it no more. <laughs> he, it was like he went back down memory lane. He started telling us stories or those of us who was listening to his live about, you know, some things that had happened in the past. And, you know, it's like, are you laying on the couch after you just finished telling us about uh, mental health are you about to <laughs> lay on the couch you're not having a moment of weakness are you um, you're gonna you're gonna do this publicly you ain't gonna suffer in silence like you've been suggesting that people uh doing he went on a whole public venting and I say public because he was on the live he was on the on a whole public venting session he started threatening to snitch on folk and everything. Let, let me let y'all. Let me let y'all hear for y'all. Listen to this. Listen to this. How you gonna shut somebody else? How you gonna shut somebody else down? Do for real. And then the thing about it is, just because I'm eccentric, just because I'm a, 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 a eccentric, you got bishops is rolling on motorcycles. You know, running around with tank tops on, driving around Memphis. With, 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 uh, uh, on a Harley Davidson, you know. Okay, um, what's wrong with tank tops and motorcycles? And who riding around with tank tops and motorcycles? And what is wrong with tank tops and motorcycles? But he wasn't done. He wasn't done. And, and, and just, you know, just go, just go right line by line, just alphabet down the whole alphabet and just and just go on because no one is going to say you cannot say that i am not a drawer you cannot say that i'm not anointed you cannot say that i don't have a calling and antoine does have a who is antoine who is antoine and who told him he don't have a calling honey he is upset with the kojic church y'all won't uh, allow him to sit up on the pulpit i guess y'all won't ordain him y'all won't give him a license and he ain't taking it no more he said he gonna tell on everybody oh let's, let's see what else we got nobody i had a senior father in ministry that was getting dogged out and getting abused by somebody that was supposed to be on his side and in his cab and I join efforts to go, you know what? If dude ain't going to chill, then we going to tell the, 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 and open up the skeletons on him. And by and large, I ain't taking it back and I'm not backing down no more. And I'm not going to be quiet. I'll release 
text messages, email. He's not going to be quiet. <laughs> I'm not trying to pick at him, but it's just, he, he, it was funny how he said that. Look, y'all remember when that, uh, when uh, William and, um, was it Bishop Sheer? When, when they got sued and that attorney called him and he was on the phone sounding like he was about to cry. He was begging. All right, William. All right. He was, I mean, he went on. He, it just came out of nowhere. It, it just it just came out of nowhere. He started fussing and going back down memory lane and uh, threatening to snitch on everyone, friends and enemies. Uh, <laughs> I bet it was just, y'all, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And it went on for a while. I just played little clips of it. It went on for a while, for a while. So he said that he still got evidence, receipts, conversations, pictures, and things in his phone. He said he still got it. And he said it was a red phone. He said what type of phone it was, but I didn't write it down. I forgot. But it was a red phone. He still got it. Y'all see that phone? He still got it in his phone. He still got it. So play with him if you want to. Who he talking to? I don't know. But be warned. He's on one. Anyway, so from there, he moved on to talking about the real Housewives of Atlanta. As y'all, most of y'all probably know who watched the show. Uh, Portia is leaving and Cynthia's leaving. Um, I stopped watching the show like maybe two seasons ago. Might have been three, but definitely two seasons ago. So I couldn't tell you what was going on. Um. It just got to be the same old, same old. I wasn't interested anymore. Just, you know. But, yeah. So, Portia's leaving. And I'm trying to remember whether Portia was one of the originals. I don't think she was. But she's leaving. And, and Cynthia definitely. I remember when Cynthia came on. She definitely was one of the originals. And Cynthia, Cynthia's leaving. Cynthia was, Bailey was one of my favorite. Her and um, Candy were my favorites on the show. Um, I tolerated Nene. Uh, I was glad when they took old girl off that married the uh, uh, Atlanta Falcons um, um, football player guy. Uh, I can't remember her name. I was glad when they took her off. I couldn't stand to even see her on the show. Uh, I didn't like um, Phaedra. I think Phaedra was funny, but I, I didn't care for her. Um... What is her? Marlo. I like Marlo. Uh, Marlo made me uncomfortable sometimes. But, um, but yeah, I just I stopped watching. I just. Uh, oh, and I like. Uh, who's the girl that came on? Uh, she had the baby. Uh, her husband is a new owns a restaurant in New York. I can't remember her name. Kendra. I like Kendra. Every, nobody likes Kendra. I love me some Kendra. I love me some Kendra. So anyway, he starts talking about who would replace them and who. They should bring on the show. I think at this point they should just leave, uh, end it. They really should have ended it uh, a season or two seasons ago. But um, but he was talking about who could have replaced him. And he was coming up with, the, with these ridiculous suggestions. Like Lynn Whitfield. Why would Lynn Whitfield go on The Real Housewives of Atlanta? But anyway, the only one suggestion that I thought that was pretty, uh, that would work or would have been pretty cute was... Um, he said Usher's ex-wife, Tamika. But is she married? But I guess some of the other ones, because uh, Portia Shoal ain't married and she on there. But uh, he suggest, suggested uh, Usher's ex-wife, T Tamika, and some other people. And he was talking about, I don't even know these folks, such and such wife. I don't know. But anyway, um, so the, his next topic was um, Don Lemon. And I really haven't, I really don't know much about this. I kind of glanced at it. Um, and, and keep saying I need to go watch some of the coverage on it and read some of the news reports about it. But it seems that, uh, Don Lemon, um, has an accuser. Y'all read the picture here. He has an accuser, Don Lemon from CNN. And I'm a Don Lemon fan. Um, but, um, someone is accusing him of what you see on the screen there. And... William being William, of course, he's having to play 
the the judge and the justice system because of course he's heard and seen all the evidence i'm being facetious i'm being sarcastic he's heard and seen all the evidence and he can he can bring down a verdict now but let's hear what williams had to say so do y'all think what do you, what do y'all think about that do y'all think that is any kind of um do you think it's any kind of truth to it or do you think I mean, when when are we gonna get enough of this? When are we gonna uh, when are we gonna get a, a, enough of these alleged? Oh, somebody wanted me. Well, if they wanted you, why didn't they have you? Why did? I mean, I, it, oh. So again, I'm a Don Lemon fan, but I I wasn't there, and I don't, I don't know Don other than seeing him on my TV screen on CNN. And so I don't know what happened. So I'm not a judge. I ain't seen all the evidence. I didn't. I'm. I wasn't a, a why I witness. I'm not on the jury where the jury get to see all the evidence. So I can't say. But of course, William is gonna play the part of someone who knows. And um, and y'all know, uh, William is against. He will. He will say he's not against it. But he seems to be against the Me Too, uh, um, movement. And so he's, you know, he, he thinks anyone who says that they was, you know, uh, assaulted in any way, that they, they, they got to be lying. And the fact that he just said, well, if they want you, why you didn't have you? That's the problem. You can't have everything you want. And that's when it becomes somewhat of a criminal act. If y'all know what I mean. So anyway, then he went on to say that he felt bad for the aura. I ain't going to say the whole name out. He felt bad for the aura. Because he said... He felt bad for the aura because the parents was okay with it. Does that make any sense to y'all? Just because a parent is okay with something that's wrong, don't make it okay for the person who's doing the wrong. I don't care whether the parents was okay with it and whether the child was okay with it. As an adult, I'm a re- I have a responsibility to do, to do the right thing and not break the law, but just do the right. I, it, it for me, it ain't even about the law. It's just, just wrong. But to William, and you know, he should have been found not guilty because the parents was okay with it. How about lock them all up? But anyway, anyway, so that's pretty much what's the recap. The, the video was two hours long, and I probably done recapped it in what less than twenty minutes. So he advertised um, his merch again. Again, he he needs for y'all. He really, really needs for y'all to get his merch. Um, his favorite, my favorite shirt that he got out is that is the lime green one that says I add more to it before I take any away because that's my most favorite saying that he says. I like when he says that or anybody says that because I heard other people say it too. But why is that shirt $35 and the other ones are $25? Why is the lime green one more than the other ones? It's $35. Anyway, as I told y'all before, he did a Tuesday night live um, trying to sell shirts and raise money for his trip to Detroit. And basically the Tuesday night live was him talking about his shirts. Um, He talked about Black Ink. Chicago came back. He seems to really like that show. And uh, he talked about that. Uh, He talked about some some celebrity type news stuff. and shows and things, most of them I wasn't familiar with. Um, actually, if you into stuff like that, the Tuesday Night Live probably you would probably enjoy. Um, William should have like a he shouldn't just kind of stick around the, the the churchy stuff, especially now that he's ran out of people that we know to talk about. He should do the celebrity stuff because he's really good at it. I mean, he knows these rappers and knows these. Um, he knows these people. He's he naming off people. I have no clue who they are, but a lot of people enjoy that type of stuff. Even people at my age and older, they enjoy. I'm just, I'm different, you know, in that, but I'm a minority when it comes to things like that. Cause most people like celebrity news. So he really should uh, do that on Instagram. I think that he would get, he, he, he would just have to be consistent and be patient in growing his audience. But I think that he would get an audience um, the way he do it. But you know, William ain't going to do anything but get in, get in his own way. And nobody can't make any suggestions to him that would, that would um, actually help him. So 
two, like I said, Tuesday night, he really didn't uh, talk about, well, he did. I just said it was a good, if you were interested in stuff like that, it was a good live. Um, it was a good discussion if you like those type things. But today, y'all, today, hold on, I'm trying to get my phone at right, and I'm reclining, so it keep going back to the wrong thing. Give me a minute. Um, he, uh, somebody brought to my attention that he got in an argument with this guy. <laughs> so he posted something. Uh, he posted uh, this guy's, like, this picture that you see on the screen. And I guess I better not leak that up there too long. Uh, YouTube may not like it. But he posted a picture of the guy at the beach. So I thought it was an appropriate picture. He's at the beach taking a selfie in his Speedo. But he's at the beach. And then he posted a um, some type of flyer. So I guess the guy was supposed to have some type of um, conference or services that didn't go off. And then, of course, the one I just showed you with him flipping the bird. Y'all know what? Y'all would be shocked to hear this. But when I was younger, we could flip the bird. Me and my sisters, I have three sisters. There's four of us. Um, my parents had four girls. But we could flip the bird. Because my mama said it's just a finger. That's all. Of course, we didn't do it in school or somewhere. I was going to get us in trouble, but we didn't get in trouble for it with, with my parents. But anyway, so uh, so he posted that and he posted, uh, copied and pasted what the guy said on his own channel. Now, y'all remember when William was trying to come after me and threaten me and all that kind of fool la la. And he said that he don't take other people's stuff. I don't I don't post other people's stuff. I don't use other people's stuff. He don't posted screenshot it and, and and took the man's pictures and unposted everything the man said i mean it's a long post a long post posted it all but he don't post other people's stuff but honey this dude nameless he hopped right on in there and he asked and he he went right in on on william he said i really don't understand your purpose for even posting this after uh 30 minutes ago commenting on my post then you pull months old worth of screenshots. Uh, the speedo, hold on. The speedo picture, my wife picked the speedo out. That picture was taken back in February. I was on vacation. Right. Why are you, why are you posting the man picture in his speedo? Then he said, I won't address the Bishop blank situation because my integrity as it pertains to ministry speaks for itself. Nobody going to just uh, slap his picture up there for fun. There are more uh, sought after individuals. If that were the case, why not Bishop blank? Then he said the middle finger picture, which I love the middle finger picture. I was being funny and that was my current mood. Pull up in which court that supports this beat up some preacher women. I'll wait. So, uh, William tried to say something back, but William ain't have much mouth with this man. He, you know, he was saying two or three sentences, but this guy was coming right back and giving him like two or three paragraphs. He even called William a bootleg LRL. Y'all know who LRL is. Blank, blank, live. That uh, well-known Atlanta YouTuber whose name I don't generally say, but sometimes I slip up and say it. He called him a bootleg LRL. Oh, it was so it was so good. Somebody sent this to me in DM, and I took joy in reading it. I repent later, but I took joy in reading it. <laughs> but they went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He said, "Uh, he said you're the uh, joke, Pennywise. Now get back to doing your job, talking about individuals with influence. Sometimes you can't take from me, and something you clearly." Do not have something you can't take from me and something you clearly do not have. I'm simply waiting on you to follow my lead and give it up. I mean, this guy, y'all, if y'all can go over there and if y'all can get to the Facebook down to the Facebook, if y'all should go read it, you will enjoy it. It will make your day. So I'm going to end the video here because I'm, I can tell I'm getting sleepy because I'm rambling and stuttering and, and, and everything. So. Uh, that's the recap from um, mostly from Sunday Night Live. Um, like I said, today's live, he talked about black ink and some other stuff. He kind of got on the topic that he had a friend. If y'all don't, if y'all can think back some months ago, he had a uh, friend that was a preacher 
uh, pastor of a church that passed unexpectedly. Um, and he talked about that. Something about that bothered him as some convention came uh, going on and they didn't put um, the guy's uh, picture on the flyer. And William was bothered about that. And uh, it seems that they really didn't acknowledge him or respect him at the services. And uh, William said that they were had been friends, him and the guy that passed, uh, for for years, for many years. Uh, and they, you know, went through, um, I guess, being ordained together at uh, uh, Pastor Nathan Simmons Church. So he was he talked about that some. Um, but anyway, anyway. Let's show this picture one more time. Mm -hmm. This is Miss Cruiser. Please like, share, and subscribe. Y'all be safe.